Last year I made the simulation of a self-balancing robot in Simlink, where I built a 3D model of the robot using Simlink libraries, and implemented the PID controller to make a balance. But here we are, a year later so, I think it's time for me to remake this project using some new skills and techniques I learned in the past year, making it more realistic and visually more pleasing. I'm not gonna start from zero here when it comes to the chassis. I already have this beautiful looking chassis that was partially designed by students at the University of Skida. It's very practical and it contains these two bumpers that can absorb the impact force generated by the robot falling to the ground, protecting its electrical and mechanical components and save it so it may live to fight another day. However, major changes have to be done here. First of all, the robot motor holders look nice, but they can support different motor sizes and dimensions, and most of the motors you buy these days come with their own holders anyways, so I think we're better off with just a flat plate that we can fix the motor holders to it later with some bolts and nuts, so we just need to make some holes here and we're ready to go. Another good idea is to make these slots and indents in the different chassis parts, allowing them to be fixed together without the need of screwing them together. And don't forget to make holes for mounting the electronic components and some other holes to help pass the wires between them. And with some additional design features, the robot looks almost ready now. We just need a pair of DC motors and some wheels and we are good to go. Exporting this chassis to Simulink can be done in several ways. The way that works best for me in this case is exporting the robot parts in SCL format, as you can see here. We can now use these parts inside Simulink. We just need to use this block named File Solid and specify the geometry to be imported from a file giving it the STL file name of our chassis part and everything should work fine. When all of the chassis parts are imported into a Simulink model, we start grouping them together. The wheels, tire and rim should be placed in a subsystem and from there connected to the motor via rigid transform block specifying the relative position of the wheel to the motor just like this. The motors then are connected to their motor holder plate as we said earlier. I made an additional frame at the center of gravity of this plate to make it easier for us to figure out the relative position of other parts that are going to be connected to it. Here you go, things are starting to come up together. We just need some color to make it even better. The next stop is the side plates. We connect these two to the motor holder plate center of gravity and then specify the name relative transition and rotation. We also need to make sure the indents and the slots in the chassis parts all match up, just like in real life. We organize the different blocks in our Simulink model in subsystems to make our lives easier. It's time now for a very important step which is connecting the robot parts using joints. As we did in the older version of this robot, we need a revolute joint between the chassis and the cart in order for it to swing, and a prismatic joint between the cart and the world frame so we can move the cart back and forth. Also, don't forget to set the gravity acceleration to be pointed downwards. And with that, you now have a self-balancing robot. But not just yet. 
In order for this robot to maintain an upright pose, it needs a control system that can move the cart back and forth until it reaches the equilibrium position. Today I'm choosing a PID controller that will take the inclination angle of the chassis from the revolute joint and it will generate a control signal that is going to be fed to the prismatic joint representing the motors in real life. Anyways, enough talking now and let's try our brand new self-balancing robot. Well, it seems to me that the robot is performing well and with a little bit more tuning, it will be even better. At this point, the PID controller is tuned to achieve the desired performance. Of course, this will take too much time to explain in this video, so actually I'm gonna make another video on how to tune a PID controller in a self-balanced robot.